Thank you so much, uh, Professor Agarwal. It was so nice of you, so kind of you, in <laughs> having uh, used such uh, generous and fine words. And I saw really, uh, You are really so nice and so much humble, uh, Dr. Divedi was saying that though he was not having my number, he looked at my missed call and gave me a call back and readily accepted the invitation. Yes, madam? Yes. Sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, it's a really an honor because of two reasons. First of all, everything comes from Professor uh, Chaitanya Agarwal is a very important assignment for me. His, uh, his uh, wishes are uh, command for me. And second is the topic which you have chosen, sir. You, I must congratulate you that currently the country is facing a very severe challenge and we require a lot of manpower and expertise and researching and awareness in the area of cyber physical security. Yes, sir. So these are the two very important reasons which, uh, which make me uh, re cancel all my appointments in the second half today so that I can be with you and uh, share whatever I have understood and I have tried to do a research project in an Indo-Norway concept. So, uh, so with that, please allow me to proceed with the, the ideas further. As you can see that uh, I have uh, already a, a professor and uh, principal investigator of an international project, which was a MOU between Government of India and Government of Norway towards the cyber physical security of critical infrastructure in smart cities. So important thing is here, critical infrastructure. So I will try to highlight the, how much this is important challenge. And secondly, I'm also heading a research group on an Indo-Italian project on smart cities. Wow, because you know, the, the, the government of India already has announced 100 smart cities. So we have also a government of India support on uh, developing the smart city in the model where it is sustainable and it's really uh, for the citizens. Similarly, I have worked uh, as a visiting scientist in India, France, uh, on IoT for a smart city, how important the technology of IoT is there. And of course, along with that, I have a couple of more assignments, including one in the Army Technology Board. So we are working together with Government of India on Army Technology Board, where we are trying to develop some technologies uh, which is not to be combined with internet. Still, it can maintain and give Army a specially dedicated uh, computer network for their own communication. So we are working on a very confidential project. I cannot disclose more information than that. But we are part of the government effort to see that we are also saved from the cyber attacks from the, from the government of India. Of course, I'm also a member of uh, a smart city uh, project, which was uh, initiated uh, in Gujarat in the time of uh, Narendra Modi was uh, the chief minister there. So with that, I can just uh, bring you to a small incident in the first time in 2015, Ukraine has witnessed the first cyber attack on critical infrastructure which resulted into complete blackout in the country. You will be surprised that it was a, it was a hacking effort in 2016, uh, which uh, was published. Uh, it was a power blackout. And it was finding suggested that the workstation and supervisory control and data acquisition systems, which were linked to 330 kilowatt substation in the North were influenced by the external sources outside the normal parameters. So it was clear case that through computer hacking, somebody could shut down the power in the whole, whole uh, city. And it was uh, reported that it was uh, uh, many times uh, people have uh, suspected, but the inquiry confirmed that it was completely a, a cyber attack. And it was later on really uh, revealed that some people who were affected in business uh, in taking the electricity contracts, they were behind this attack. Just to say as a warning, against the nationalization of power plants owned by a Russian typhoon. So why is this becoming possible to reach power grid? So whole world was alerted with this, uh, this particular incident that uh, somebody can from outside also influence my country, especially the most critical uh, uh, thing like electricity. And that was the beginning of the end. Israel also has witnessed a cyber attack in the uh, year 2016. And again, it was a critical infrastructure, that means the energy infrastructure. And but somehow they could restore because of the country who has a very strong defense system. They have built a digital iron dome, digital iron dome, 
they are very very uh, you can say uh, smart survivor but still they could they could feed the pinch of the with the heat there saudi arabia also received cyber attack in 2017 so i can tell you number of events like that which are suggesting that cyber attacks are already on the rise and there are many other cyber attacks which you might be aware but i am only confining myself to the critical infrastructure and the threat to the critical infrastructure is large and it is real it is a real threat it is not a perceived threat so what i am going to cover this today is first of all let me define very uh, from very beginning what exactly is critical infrastructure and why the cyber security is important uh, and relevant for the critical infrastructure and can critical infrastructure be attacked this is my second question then i want to tell you about the challenges of cyber attack and how to how to handle it and what are the attack points then also we can discuss about cyber attacks on india especially in threat metrics and also the preparedness of india i am not only going to uh, make you a completely uh, a fearful environment but i am also telling you the preparedness unless we know the threat we cannot prepare suitably and also about the smart cities and the efforts and the researching which we are involved into a cyber attack on critical infrastructure could be preferred mode of attack in a future war it can cripple a nation without firing a single shot so this is going to be very very uh, suitable thing for any intruders from outside to attack you on cyber level and it can uh, can make you really feel bad about it so what exactly is critical infrastructure which we are talking about today so critical infrastructure as i am defining here is systems networks and assets that are so essential that their continued operation is required to ensure the security of a given nation its economy and the public's health and safety you can consider for example in this in this scenario uh, in the center is power grid so if i can fail the power grid you can see the associated failures in terms of the complete ict infrastructure will be failed <coughs> the banking and finance will be failed because you know how much online we are handling the banking activities and financing things similarly a lot of transports are completely being run through the power similarly industrial production water resources and dams are being controlled many cases many government services are also going to be affected if you are taking power grid so any country depends completely on various systems such as power grid ict infrastructure and transport system as any disturbance creates cascading effect in any uh, cyber attack, in the cyber attack so why cyber attack in ci is more pertinent now because every equipment is now computerized and after computerization also interesting thing is to see uh, the range of computerization first so i can read out from the slide computerized equipments are used in the control of equipment and industrialized processes and these are deployed in every aspect of critical national infrastructure such as nuclear power plants electric grids chemical plants oil refineries gas processing facilities railway and transport communication systems pharmaceutical productions lpg tankers distributed centers and ports the all can be termed as cyber physical system they are combination of computing and the physical infrastructure and they are under attack an important thing is there is a huge amount of high interdependence between them if power goes down internet does not work so is the related effect if nuclear plant system can be manipulated then you can uh, imagine a catastrophe cannot be avoided and you know all nuclear power plants are also are being controlled through computers that's unfortunately true so high increase in automation and centralized control so the centralized destruction is also becoming easy and is also becoming possible so we have to understand the known risk and issues and what are the security and prevention mechanism for these issues so what are the immediate next steps at provincial level at national level and also at global level why at global level because if somebody is hacking my systems of indian uh, government sitting in singapore or hong kong or in dubai 
my country laws cannot control and capture the culprit even if I know it. So it has to be a treaty among all the nations at global level that any cyber crime committed across the border will be taken to the task and will be prosecuted. And that's why the effort is not going to be confined to provincial or national level. It has to be a global effort. And as you know, the problem also is that a cyber space and physical space are increasingly intertwined and software controlled. And that's why the whole thing is being uh, possible for manipulation. You can see there are three infrastructural uh, planes, not the layers, the planes I have drawn here. The downmost, lower, lower, lowermost is the cyber infrastructure. Then I have physical infrastructure. And on the top of them, what I build is a critical infrastructure. In critical infrastructure, you can see all the basic amenities like uh, energy, transportation, telecommunication, and, uh, and the key assets are involved. So important thing is that how I ensure the reliability and integrity and safety of the system. That's what should be my objective. So there is a definitely a complete uh, developed science behind the cyber uh, physical uh, security. And there are different levels of, of uh, threat also, which can be threat metrics created. But what actually is the basic uh, uh, issues uh, in this whole idea? First, I can tell you the energy production and distribution systems which comprise a vital economic and social infrastructure. And they are, in, uh, and they are exposed to three levels of uh, problems. First, security threats inherited from the ICT sector. That is what we call cyber threat. Second is possible physical attacks also, like somebody can bomb the place and put fire, can uh, shoot missiles, or, and maybe the natural disaster also can come there. That also is possible, like floods and uh, uh, tycoons like that. So now the thing is that combination is also possible for these two. But the problem is that this failure will have very, very dangerous effects. Cascading failures will be, will be observed. So you can see India already ranks uh, third in the terms of highest number of internet users in the world after USA and China. And that complete growth and the potential to hack also is increased. It's also top 10 spam sending country top five country to be affected by cyber crime. So we are to be alerted. And why the attacks on the electric grid is possible? Because an attack on electricity grid can be more debilitating than a military attack since electricity is the life of the nation. All the uh, system like defense, telecom, banking, transportation are the important parts of the critical infrastructure. And that's why we have to be very, very careful. And you can see there are already some attacks previously at the Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust, which was hit by a cyber attack. And as a result, 1.8 million standard container units were grounded to halt. 1.8 million standard container units because there was a cyber attack and the system was confused and was not functioning well. Of course, in India, particularly I'm finding out the sequence and chronology continuously, we are facing attack. So uh, the top three patterns in India is the denial of service attacks, web application attacks, and also payment card skimming. There are a lot of uh, issues you might also be listening to. But what I am concentrating and what my research group is working these days is the attacks on the uh, cyber uh, physical level, which is ICS and also SCADA. The SCADA is a full form of supervisory control and data acquisition system. This actually, this particular unit is the basis of all successful automation projects worldwide. Wherever you go for automation, industrial automation, you will use SCADA. SCADA is a computer-based system for gathering and analyzing real-time data to monitor and control equipment that deals with critical and time-sensitive materials or events. So SCADA systems were first used in 1960s and they are, since then, they are the integral part in many industrial plants and production facilities. But earlier days were not risky because the SCADA was a uh, isolated standalone system. But at the time progress, we wanted a software control and a, a system which can be renewed in terms of uh, uh, new software releases. We got the, disconnected by the internet. When we connected by the internet with the SCADA systems, the whole problem started. 
Of course, the facilities also were started, but the problems comes along with it. So vulnerabilities in the SCADA have been identified by the cyber army. And as you can see there, cyber attacks in India in 2010 also was there. And many of the uh, facilities in India, when they are buying for these uh, or for this electrical equipment, many a times, uh, for example, say they were uh, buying from Chinese firms, Chinese firms. So you can see that their Chinese firms have bagged SCADA contract for more than 18 cities, 18 cities in India. That's why I'm telling you this, this conference is very, very important. And uh, the companies from China like uh, Harbin Electric, Dongfang Electronics, Shanghai Electric, Zifang Automation, either supply the SCADA equipment or manage the power distribution network in these cities. And I need not elaborate it further. What does it mean to have a Chinese firm supplying such an important critical component to Indian, uh, Indian states? So mostly the states in Gujarat and Haryana electricity boards and many people like many uh, states like that have already gone for it, already gone for it. So you can understand the vulnerability is also visible at Indian grid uh, when there were uh, some part were affected in the July 2012 and their, their failure was continuously uh, affecting the areas in the northern, western, eastern and northeastern grids there were down for, for a while. And this was uh, re repaired and removed. But the problem is that, as I, I written in the last but one bullet in this slide, the problem is like this. Automation done in the first phase and security later on as a patchwork. So when we are planning to construct a house, we are building the house with all facilities like ventilation, lot of lights, lot of airs, and lot of facilities, openness. And when we complete the construction of the house, and then suddenly we realize that house is open to a lot of thief and people who want to steal something can very easily come. Can very easily come. Then you start thinking about the security. So the same problem comes in the, in the automation domain that people when go for automation, that time they don't think about security. But when the automation is completed, then we started thinking and making a mechanism about the security. So when you can make additional patchwork for security, that patchwork can very easily be removed also. Please try to understand. So why not the security provisioning in the designing phase of the automation itself? When you are building the house, then itself you should know that in this colony, in this housing board, I'm always listening to the stories of some theft and something being stored in the night. So let me build my house in the design level also from the security part. Of it. Because that will be more stable and permanent and more stronger security situation. And that's what is the problem uh, when we see the power system vulnerabilities. The advantage of digital microprocessor, electric power utilities have exploited the computer technology for improved communication and automation of control centers, substation and remote protection equipments. And that's why you can see from the picture, I'm not elaborating it further because we are at the fag end of the complete course. So I should not, uh, should not burden you with more technicality. Even at the time, I will be very happy to, to explain uh, how the SCADA is a very easy and possible target for cyber attack. Cyber attack. And you know, the SCADA is attacked and your power station is also under threat. So that's what is the problem. And then you have to understand that when you same thing, you shift everything to the smart cities, the smart cities, then what will happen? Then you can understand, first of all, let me very quickly tell you how the smart city is perceived technically, how we define it. You already know that the government of India has announced uh, an ambitious 100 smart cities program. Many of our cities are undergoing a lot of changes if you realize. Either they are a smart city or they are part of the future smart city project. And what they're doing is they're trying to have a, a rapid upgrade rapid upgrade of urban infrastructure and online services to citizens, which is enabled by information technology. In the pandemic time, we have seen many of the facilities were also renewed with the online availability. But what is important is the last in the box, security measures of for smart cities. Because the smart cities are typically being designed 
with the view of a central control command center central control command center please share with me if you have any understanding about this thought terminology central uh, control command center as you know a typical smart city is an urban development vision to integrate the multiple ict solution in an efficient fashion to manage the uh, city's assets for its so typically a city will be having many many smart things and uh, they are dumb smart because <coughs> their capacity is to learn from the past so you have a uh, many uh, things already connected to each other and they are being visible to some integrated command integrated command because they all are connected through the computer network and uh, also uh, technology supporting it to our iot internet of things then we have a protocol like uh, constrained application protocol and there are also many such uh, possibilities available so a typical smart city with a smart building a smart uh, energy smart transportation they all are being controlled through a central command and control center which has all the critical resources and infrastructure controlled from one place controlled from one place are we not sufficiently alerted with this as a potential threat so if you have a central command center i can show you the example and picture of typically like ahmedabad so ahmedabad in one particular small room you can sit and find out from each part of the city what is happening in terms of transportation in terms of electrical installation in terms of almost everything so if you are controlling and being able to monitor from here and somebody can hack the same system then what will happen a centrally controlled system also can be easily centrally hacked <coughs> easily centrally hacked <coughs> and then our suggestion our proposal our research group is working on the line of prevention by design we have to prevent the cyber attacks by design at the design level itself and try to consider the the various parts of the city in terms of i call it instrumented then they are interconnected and then they are made intelligent and that's what is the whole purpose so our research group in iit ilahabad is working with the iit kanpur in cyber physical security approaches with many of government of india a project supporting us uh, with a huge amount of funding and we are so thankful to to our collaborators that they support us so that we can build and avoid the incidences like what happened to iranian nuclear plant or to uh power outage in ukraine israel and even german steel plants were also attacked along with the new york hydroelectric plants so we also have witnessed many attacks we cannot disclose it uh, in, in the public but we cannot deny the fact that we also were uh, defeated some some number of times but it's a constant battle going on so researchers have been working hard on inventing methods for protecting these systems and their control from security threats so typically we are collaborating with the interdisciplinary center uh, for cyber security and cyber defense of critical infrastructure which is headed by professor deep shukla uh, who is returned from usa to establish the first research center in india and we are very very closely collaborating with them and they are in turn collaborating and taking the support from idaho national labs uh, and sandia national labs and also have a strong support system from israel and what we are trying to develop is uh, is based on the international globally accepted framework called nist framework framework says that we have to understand the whole cyber security scenario in five different phases five different phases first identify identify the attack identify the uh, assets where it, the attack can be possible after identify second is protect then if even after protection there is a attack already happened then detect and then respond and then also comes the recover becomes a recover as you can see below every phase there are detailed uh, functionalities being shown and our researchers are working day and night in various different aspects of it trying to develop techniques uh, systems and also uh, methodologies in handling this and we are trying to see how the how to create a cost effective so at iit kanpur study also shared with parliament committee on finance this year it said that the attacks on the equation group which is a wikileaks report that is a clandestine cia nsa program 
they infected india's telecom military sectors and research institutes so we are already facing the heat already facing the fire the government has taken up a note of the vulnerability of the india's power grid to cyber attacks and according to report the government plans to lay down product wise technical specifications and regulations to ensure that only audited and tested equipments are connected to the electricity grid it also plans to develop a testing facility for cyber security where sourced equipment can be tested for malware before installation and periodically after commissioning as well the government is also planning to create a new tri service defense agency for cyber warfare for cyber warfare this defense cyber agency uh, will work in coordination with the national cyber security advisor nsa it will also have more than 1000 experts who will be distributed into a number of formations of the army navy and indian air force so we are alert we are doing all what is required to be done and national mission mode activities are or needed for the cyber combat cyber combat so uh, as i have to confine in 30 minutes time so i have tried to do exactly the same and i hope i could do the justice even to the topic while limiting to the time frame and uh, for my side this is all that i want to tell you but i'm open to your queries questions and and any information you want to update